What's up, everybody? This is the Poker Coaching Study Session. And today we're going to be looking at a handy story from David. David, you're from Macedonia, right? That's right. All right. Well, tell us a little bit about this poker game you played and the kind of day you had and everything. Yeah, so uh, as you can see, the hand history starts with 32 big blinds. That's because we late reached this tournament. And we late reached this tournament because we started this session after a 10 hour live session. And it turned out to be another 10 hour online oh session. <laughs> so you played a full day live and then you came back home and said, oh, well, why not play a little bit of poker? And yeah, then that's this right. This game would never stop. <laughs> it never gets boring. All right. I haven't been able to do something like that for 25 years. <laughs> I could do it in my 20s and 30s, probably, DJ like that, but man. So here we are with 32 big blinds and a dream. Let's see how it goes. Flop, flop, flop. We get this flop, check, bet, kind of big. Do you guys like calling here? We have a pair. We're not supposed to pull on monotone board, but he sizes up his multi way. I think there's a lot of EV continuing with a uh, pair like this. So. He bet into two people too, right? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, that I would be hate. enough for me to get out. Yeah, I don't hate fold as well. I like the fold. Good open. Okay. So low jack versus high jack, right? What what do you guys do here? You I'm can you could mix, yeah. Yeah, I'm mixing. I'm gonna use some larger bets and checks. How often do you mix and why do you mix here? About 50 50. Okay. I would say you don't need to go large here, but the fact that it's a paired board with no connectivity really. Um is going to boost up the um, the out of position betting. So what, one of my first lessons I had with Matt Affleck, when he looked at my database, he, he, he was looking at, at some of the spots and he said, whenever you take a flop out of position and it's up, you should lean towards checking. Yep. The one key difference I would say here is it's a super dry flop. And I think a lot of our hands benefit from starting the bet. That can anytime you get immediate folds, it's really good. Okay. Well, the machine says you should check around 80% of it. Wow. That. Seems reasonable. So this is a, a classic spot where your range wants to check it out. You have a portion of your range I want to bet, pocket eight, pocket nine, pocket ten. These kind of hands, but in like maybe the upper dangler and the pair of cards. If you have a seven, you bet. If you have a pocket eight, you bet. Uh, but it's all like your range overall. Everything is checking in here. Right? Can you see where the check raises are coming from? Sorry, can you see where the check raises are coming from if you check and you face a bet? Face I, a get, bet. I imagine it's going to be fairly robust check raise range. Because, like, low jack doesn't have many 7x, right? Problem is your 30 big blinds effective, so I don't know how crazy we're going to get here. We're check ah. every 7, 8x, and everything ah. we bet on the flop, kind of, wants to check raise. 24% is decent. So instead of betting, we want to lean towards check raising. It's a lot more efficient. So... Always lean towards checking when you're in this kind of scenario. Here you go with a bat. It's not. Try to check a lot more on this one. If it's a raise, now you're just in the potatoes. Oh. Uh, I started looking at this end quickly before, but I didn't see that. So what the hell are you up to here? <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good question, right? This is uh, uh this is the ego saying, "Screw you, guy. You don't have anything." So yeah, the problem is, is, I don't think we really have to raise uh three better over pairs here. I think we probably are just calling, right? Uh, you probably are just calling here a lot. 
okay, he is actually taking some of the suited wheels. <laughs> and uh, I mean, the deuce okay. is two pair, but the five and the six is pretty interesting. So, I mean, it's like, it's not crazy. Like the portion of the range he's pulling from. Okay, okay. There's a little bit of merit here in that crazy race back. But honestly, you should be just checking. If you want to play aggressive, you can check race. It's a lot better. Yeah, now true. let's see what happens. You he fight. probably folds. Oh, you yeah, down. I was going to save. Well, that's spicy. Very spicy. Go for a check raising strategy instead. Like that. It's a pretty good flop. What kind of size do you go for here? I probably just go small personally. Yeah, I probably use a mergy bet around half pot. You know, I want to go big because uh, a lot of his range would connect with that board a little bit. Well, uh, we I mean, you kind of got good equity got, there. Oh, you got really good equity. You kind of got like the super nuts here, right? Like, right. And also, your 30 big blinds effective. Like, you're just not going to go too crazy at 30 big blinds that frequently. This is probably fine, but I would probably bet small, I think. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, like, the range uh, on the flop. The range is betting small, mostly. Yeah, that's what I would think. It's a sliver of big bets. So, like, yeah, but the bigger the bigger size you can go here, it's kind of 55%. Whereas here, you really size it up. I think your hand is a little bit too strong here to size up that much. Well, it's also a function of locked up equity, I think. Like, if you replace that eight with, like, let's say, I don't know, a five, or where a there's no, or, well, yeah, or a six, where there's, like, no... There's not as many like made hands available. You'll see some more polarized betting here. You'll see larger yeah. betting. Six is still pretty dynamic. Oh, six. Yeah, there's six. Yeah, six is still more dynamic. So you probably can size up where a five, you might still bet small. I think a five would bet larger because there's no made straights. All right. So for those who missed the beginning, this is what we're looking at today. Mm hmm. Uh, now, yeah, a little bit less here, like half butt max, and then mostly a bet small. To be honest, though, it's not, it's not really a mistake. It's fine. Yeah. Barreling this turn, I don't like it. What do you guys think? Versus big blind, uh, probably, uh, good. probably good versus big blind, right? Not with Jack Ten. Oh yeah. I would say I would say it is good with Jack Ten. I mean, how many King X does he have here that you're really concerned about? Well, I just feel like we don't pick up equity in our end. Like, we don't gain anything from a king turn. Our range, yeah. Our range, is, it's a good card for a range. But I mean, you got a pair and a straight flush draw, open-ended. I don't even know. I think it kind of breaks the rules a little bit with that. You just have so much. Yeah, okay. So that's a good size edge. Yeah, I see a flop. Here. Good flop. This is a good check raise candidate. Definitely. I would always check raise here. Very nice. It's a little large, I think, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, this deep, right? This deep. You probably don't yeah, you, you, you don't need to go quite that big at 25. Where the FX is that big out of position? It's just he's only 25 behind, so it's you're you're just gonna be isolating versus his like pure ace X. Yeah, it's oh, fine. Uh, it's, it's fine. Yeah, like, it looks good. Yeah, the machine says uh, it would take seven, so it's good. Mm -hmm. Jam. Ooh. Yeah, all in. Yeah, this is way, 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 way too small. I'm always going all in here. You should. Too? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta rip it. This is fine. Yeah, I mean, he put it in, but it's whatever. Hello. What is this? I don't know how you win tournaments and running into aces, but you did it. So congratulations. <laughs> All right. This is a less interesting spot now. Okay. Like if that guy didn't overcall, I would be really curious about making a call. 
If he doesn't call, it's very close, right? Because we have I think, a booty. But if, yeah, but calls, you got a booty on the line. I think you're supposed to call if the other guy doesn't overcall. This is a fold now, though. I oh, think. yeah. Shoot it, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Dodge mm. Dacey. Right running into aces again. Yeah. What are you doing, man? I, 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 I think I was I think I was calling for sure if, if there wasn't a cold call behind. Yeah. And you should. This is probably a smidge wide. The border, maybe? Yeah, I would say you're probably drawing like King Nine is probably in there. I think King Eight. Do you open Jam King Nine? Uh yeah, I don't think you're opening not all in sizings here from ten yeah. lines at a bounty. Right. Yeah, I think King Nine's the uh bottom. Maybe that being nine. said, I, I don't think you're making huge EV mistakes here, but I feel like this has got to be close. Yeah, 0%. It's not good. So you see the EV. The EV is actually negative 0.1, so you're definitely close. Under the gun, see King 9. There it is. Um, there is a limping strategy here, which is pretty interesting. But uh, A smidge I'm, wide. It's a smidge wide. Like I don't think you're making a huge mistake here, though. Oh, they're they're hungry. Oh, oh eight. Right. I thought it was going to be the heart. Yeah, on the turn he knew it was there. My God. All right, this is a good hand. Jam. I, I would just keep it easy. Like you could do this. This is okay. I don't think this is bad. First thing I would say though, like looking at this, is you're at a position three betting size seems to be very small. Very small. I mean, he can be small, but not that small. I think he's still got to go three, three to point two x. And then that might just make it a jam. I didn't forget it how is, many chips he had. It is not going in. Yeah, That's twenty five. Five. I think. So he can go like six still. Six point one. Yeah, six point one. I was gonna say. So a little bit bigger, but uh, it's closer. Uh, I would bet. Very big here. I wouldn't bet small. What do you guys think? I don't think it matters. He's 16 behind. Like I think it's a small C bet too. Yeah, I, I, I think if you were deeper, that would make a lot more sense. I don't think it really matters too much. Uh, I'd like the bigger bet on the flop. Seven. Yeah. Seven and two 14. Half plus. Yeah. I like a bit bigger here. Happy day. Oh man, see that ace? I thought it was like over. <laughs> you thought we were done again. No, we're gonna. But not only did he play 10 hours live and then late reds this, but he also rebought. <laughs> this is good. The freeze out game. I like that. Good flop. Too. Oh my goodness. You Kings scam pocket kings. Let's go. That was an amazing flop. Great post flop effort. Um, this is this is fine. Good. Uh, okay, maybe maybe more of a call. So my question is, David, if he four bet jams, what are you doing here? Hold. Yeah. So that's this is why it's that. a disaster to three bet with this queen suit. Right. Exactly. As Louis is explaining, if you can't call a four bet jam with a hand this strong, you probably shouldn't be three betting it. Yeah, but you can't fold it, right? It's oh, you, 30, 30, 30 bigs. This is 30. the like the strongest call. Yeah. So like it's Jack at, but in a PKO, don't you want to be ice showing? No, not with these. So it, the, the concept still it applies. Like just because there's a bounty on his head, it doesn't change the performance of ace queen suited versus a four bed jam. Like it's still gonna be like close to zero ev at best if the yeah. guy's somewhat balanced also here this being a pko it's even more of a call because this guy could reshove this guy could reshove. yeah honestly this is a great trap hand here where like if you call here and you get like one of these shorties to jam this guy with a 30 is going to be going in probably wider to making this a much more profitable call in that situation do we blast yeah. this flop uh yes yeah, if you three bet pre flop, you should be definitely blasting this texture. This is never a check. Never a check. No, no. Like, uh, you got the backdoor flush, you flop a gut shot, and it's two Broadway cards. You should definitely be betting a third or half pot here. 
Yeah, I think it's probably large, right? I would think it's a third or half. Not available. It's, it's a problem because you're just not in the tree. Like you're gonna have to look at a, a smidge. We, we can look at other hands next to it, right? Yeah, you can look at similar hands, I suppose. Like, look at the offsuit branch. That'll that'll help out. So small. We don't have a checking range on this section. That's what I thought. So very often, okay, almost every time, whenever you tree bet, you want to see bet the flop. And if you do it small, it's almost always going to be good. The deeper you get, you can size up to off pot. Uh, but you don't have a checking range here. Mm -hmm. And I drew that one. Okay. Ooh, you can't fold here. This no. is this is no bueno. Number one, you don't have a checking range. And number two, the, in a three bet pot with this SPR, you got the stone cold nuts. You don't well, get the like, second pair. Even, even if he does have a king here, you're drawing pretty live. Like an ace is probably he doesn't have ace king really, because he would probably four bet preflop, right? So an ace is probably good for you. A 10 is going to be a chop in some cases, but it's still good for you. A queen, like, and that's versus a king. He shouldn't have a king here all the time. Like, he's going to have a 10 here. Like, this could be jack 10. This could be diamonds. Yeah. Could be queen 10. Like, there's all kinds of stuff that you're still performing quite well versus. So Same position. Not a good fold at all. Good. This is not good at all. Yeah, I would, I would be, uh, you definitely need to be stickier here. So another note for you here. Well, I just wonder if it's like MDF work. It could be like MDF work. To be well, honest. no, it's really like how to play a three bet bot as the aggressor when the, the texture favors your range. Right? Okay. Yeah, if you see bets, it could just have been over maybe. Yeah. Mm, I like raising here. Yeah. Call. Yeah, just see a flop. Scan. So if you had a spade, I would continue there. But without the spade, I think you need to fold. You mean a spade on the flop? Yep. If you had a spade on the flop. Would this be good? I still don't think we get to fold. You might be right, Ken. Like, um, you, it, it may be like this may be good enough with the two overs and the three to a straight. But I'm, I'm thinking, like me personally, if I had a spade on the flop, I would continue here. Yeah, I mean, it was a larger bet, so. So you're right, Ken. Like it's like a zero EV continue. Yeah, but with a spade. So yeah. we had King Queen of. Well, they're all con. With clubs. How's the EV? It's still zero. With it's just because you're in position. No, no, no. You got to look at hearts, Louis. You got to look at hearts. This uh, is hearts is easy, but clubs, I mean, I want to get like with. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Clubs. So clubs. it's marginally better. Marginally yeah, better. It's like a little bit better. Yeah. Marginally yeah. better. Yeah. So you need like King Queen of Clubs to continue with it. Uh, don't so mind. I think this is okay versus the cutoff. If this was the button, I would probably be jamming combos like this. And this honestly might be a jam. Yeah, but you're you kind of want to like uh, keep the big blind in, right? Well, so it's not that I don't want to keep him in. I kind of want to isolate the pot and as the aggressor here, because like okay, let's say you call here, and what do you do if the big blind jams and then the cutoff jams? Fold. Like you just lose, you lose the pot. Yeah. Is that the, uh, I'll just check the range. Want me to pull it up? I'm just curious if, if I'm over, if, if I'm imagining this too aggressively. No, 100% call, Chris. So, 100% call, right? Versus RFI, small blind versus I think you're cutoff. just going to let this go on the flop. Okay, if even versus the button. You see some jamming from like fours and fives, but it's too aggressive to jam. A little bit deep, too. Yeah, 40 big blinds is a bit deep. 
You want to jam like as king, right? Well, no, you you are jamming here with like fours and fives, is what I was saying. But ace king, it's ace queens is the one that's jamming. You're suited tens. Do you like the call here? Uh, no, let's take a look. I fold. I hate it. I don't like it at all. Ah. I, I could get sticky with maybe fives. This guy could read jam. Uh, this it's is a three way pop, man. Yeah, I think not closing the action and having like a range behind. I just like folding here. And from you the should big be over line, maybe, here. maybe would be a very questionable call, right? Actually, from yeah, the maybe. line, I don't think we can fold that pair against late position to just one go. Well, so it's also ace four. Big line, but not closing the action. This is a disaster. I understand it, but I don't like Now you got a bluff. Do we need to block here? Well, the 10 now, I don't know. I mean, I think I just I like, check. Just check, man. You're not in the tree. You're not going to be able to see yeah. this, I don't think. Man, he hits the 10. You got to get so a path to victory on that hand was you could have maybe led turn when the when the second card paired. Um, Is this yeah. good enough to flap? Because I'm three betting very heavy here. Yeah, I'm three betting. Um, I like three betting here because the the blinds are so short. Okay, so it's not. It's more of a call. Well, you also have to kind of like adjust for the situation a little bit. Like, look at the big blind and look at the small oh, blind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. A musical. So I definitely want to present an uncapped range here versus the guy with 49 big blinds. Do we like a big bet from here? Yeah. Um, it's, prob it's probably fine. This no, usually, no, no, it's no, usually no. small button versus cutoff. Usually yeah. the, the uh, yeah. float bet. The guy here checks 50% of the time. That's small. The other half. Most of the time, yeah, that's small. If you had a combo to bet large, this is it. Yeah, there are. There's going to be some large bets, but it's predominantly small, I think. Oh well, it's mostly betting on the half pot side of things. This one, like, oh, you can dig it. It's four saying, into like... seven, so it's a okay. This is good. I mean, you got the heart behind too. Vulnerable strength. I like jamming here. I think. Well, I think it's just a three bet. Yeah, a three bet. What? What? Look at the big. Oh, uh, well, he's man. got ten big blinds. He wants them to rejam, I guess. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's probably not terrible. Okay, this is silly. Yeah, but... This is. I think this is silly. I I would always treat that here. Like I can never fight. So, like one thing I think you should kind of keep in mind there here is, unless you have like the uber uber nuts, and there's like a bounty at stake, you need to present this guy an uncapped range. Otherwise, you're going to have a very hard time, like, getting access to these bounties. Yeah. If anything here, we need to get this heads up right away. Like, I, I, I don't know how eager you want to be playing, like, uh, playing the caller in a hunter big blind pot here. But that, yeah. could very, that could very well happen. This type of hands will play heads up a lot better than multi -way. That's for sure. But it, it works out here. This is this is fine. Um, I like calling here mainly. I think you can raise this. For, verse R5 from the big blind. Yeah, you're actually, how deep are we? 40 big blinds? We're going to get one call, right? Yeah, you can't fold yet. Check, check. Do we block? I bluff. It's not a bluff. It's a bluff. Yeah, I mean, I got like, you know, third pot, whatever. Hey, whose hand history we gone through? This is what we're looking at, Joey. This is David from Macedonia. Oh, okay. That's cool. So, so do we block that? Yeah, I think so. The seven and eight are pretty bricky for button. So, I mean, I think we could you block. You got them. like, you got like fourth pair. Why would you not just check? Just checks. What kind of block bet do we find here? Take a guess. You need stronger. You need like an eight or something. An eight would be an good. Eight, Maybe a seven. A seven. Solid. I, I think Queen, a seven. Solid. A seven. Is a seven block bet thing? I think so. Maybe. Maybe. Queen. Queen's easy. Seven. I mean, that's a value bet. You need to find the small bets. So seven. a seven's a good one. An eight's a good one. An eight's a basically a value bet here some of the time. 
Yeah. It looks like sixes and sevens are kind of where this blocky size is coming from. Six. Look at this. Mixed frequency on the six. Yeah. But not, not pocket six. That's a set. That's a, that's, well, yeah, that's a very strong hand. So fives, for example. Okay, so there's a sliver of black bats with pocket four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm calling. Mm. I don't know. Might get the I, raise. I don't think this is a call. What, what is he repping, though? He ain't got shit. That's what he's repping. For, for me, it's an easy call. So my question is, what was the action? It was like, did he bet the flop? Bet flop, check turn. Yeah. Okay, so like, this is probably it, not a queen. It seems like a marginal made hand. Maybe it's like, he could do this with six, seven, seven, eight. Jacks, um, tens, nines. He shouldn't have jacks, tens, nines too frequently because we didn't check raise on the queen high. But he's got jack, x, and 10x in his bluffing range, right? Yeah, I suppose. So, like, so. he's got plenty. He should have plenty of bluffs here. I ain't folding. Well, it's a fold on the machine. It's calling 10% of the time. A Ace three is a better call than um, pocket six, fours. Seven. Two pair. Like it's a little wide. Seven six is a bit wide. He opens off suit eight. What? Right? So he connects it's with the eight, seven. connects with the queen. To be honest, I think this hand's completely fine, and I kind of like a fold um, myself. Yeah, I yeah, I like a fold. You open seven six off from button. Yes, I do. Yeah, really. All of the all of the uh, connectors, offsuit connectors, I open basically all of them except for like three four. I missed them. Well, it's in this range here, so. This is big line, right? Yes. Well, pocket four is mixing heavy, but mostly four. There's a, can I see the button range? It calls with the spade. This is the button's range. So seven six is a bit wide. Thought so. No, seven, it's six. fine. It's not like it's just a yeah. pin out. I'm not saying it's spewy. It's just wide. Uh, I think uh, this isn't the opening range. No, Is that's that not. Opening? That's not no, the that's not range. the opening range. Go pre flop. You got to go pre flop to look at the, what he's actually doing. Seven six. Okay, it is a bit wide here. At forty, I guess is what that is. Mark six check. Airboard. Ace, I have a heart. Got a check, right? I'm playing check in the middle. I don't mind checking. I have a heart. We could. I... Uh, it's not. Nah, I, I hate that. I hate that bet. So my only challenge is, is what's the plan? Like for facing aggression. Like if that 10 big blind stack jams over this, what do you do? Uh, that's a good question. Probably call. Yeah, it's hard, right? Like you, you probably should call. I don't know. <laughs> like uh I think having have a heart a... makes it especially bad to be calling. Um I would rather call without a heart, at least it gives them a couple more bluffs. Heads up against him, it's a range bet. And heads up against him, I think it's a range check. Yeah. So I guess checking is better than anything else. Here. Yeah, you have to check here. Okay. okay. Is it like a is one it, or two? It's a versus small blind range. It's probably fine. Uh, I'm never calling here. Oh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, honestly, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I like putting the chips in here, yeah. going for the double booty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this PK. Yeah. This is a PKO. <clears throat> that's what that's what booties mean. We lost. I like calling here. 
I like playing very passively. I don't like playing aggressively here. Uh, oh, once, right? Yeah, you, you got a heart, man. You got to call once. One. Do you have to call with two people left? Like, I'm thick saying I would defend if it folded me in a big blind. I'm going to stick around with the heart, but do we really got to stick around here? Yeah, so check I it think, out. Yeah. yeah. Because I this mean, end, we could river a seven. We could revert well, the pair could also, be good in, by some some very low frequency of the time. I mean, so even yeah, if, also like you got to think about it. Like okay, like the guy, the big blind, he's double checked this board now, so he should be relatively capped. The guy in position on the button, he shouldn't be checking back too much value on the flop here, having position on this pot. Like, if he's got pocket aces with a heart here, you think he's ever checking or something like that, you know? Or a king, no. for instance? I was just strictly thinking about four players that are handy outs of someone else having a better heart are pretty good. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, but it's a small bet, and nobody else has called yet. Well, and we also have a pair. We have yeah. a pair. We could hit a seven. Like, we don't have a clean equity here. We all agree. But we have enough equity to keep floating just a little bit to see what, what happens so we. There's... Like, it could go hard, check, 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 and we win. It could go a seven, and then who knows? Uh, so we don't really have clean equity, but we have some form of equity, I want, and we want to realize. I would definitely continue here. Oh, I like calling. Yeah. And let's see if they show down. No, they don't show down. Okay. No. Uh, uh, I'll complete here. Uh, Wait, you're... Oh, wait, I misread the hand. So our minimum oh, defense frequency, though, right? What's our minimum defense frequency for away? It's like, it's, it's so small. You can't uh, you can't necessarily um, equate that on the turn just because it's not equally distributed against all players in the hand. And considering two of those players are relatively capped at that point, it kind of makes it difficult because a little more of the earnest lies on you and the other guy. What? Then your range want to rely on scamming hands to continue, like this pocket seven. I actually think the weight falls on the button there, Galen, more than us. Well, he's he's also checked the flop. So it's like, that's what I was saying. I think he's he's relatively capped there. But I, I don't know. It's hard to look at those spots, right? I like a call here. I, I don't. I like I, this. I, think this I like okay. ripping. I like to rip this. You like to rip. Yeah, I don't. Know. Uh, I mean, I don't hate. You might as well get the chips in on your equity. You get all that way. It, get full value it won't. When you hit. Louis, it won't show the answer on GTO Wizard because it went to the flop multi-way. Yeah, we understand that, Joey. We still we can maybe uh, look at the solution heads up, just to kind of get a um, idea. Yeah, because this guy doesn't matter at all. No, he doesn't. Uh, so Queen Ten us. I mean, I we're already it, we're already looking at almost a one to one SPR. And yeah, well, you, have zero, you have zero fold equities, which might make it not a thing, but I think you're just too shallow to really care. Yeah. You got a you got a flush draw and open ender. Like I don't know what else you're waiting right? on. Yeah. Uh... It might call, but I would be surprised. I mean, it's like seven. I mean, we have a flush draw and a straight draw. I can't even see his bed size. It's kind of hidden. That's four big money. So like half pot? No, you got to go smaller, though. It's a multi-way pot, so that's not representative of the proportion. It's a yeah, small he, bet. He went relative. like 20, 25% pot. Yeah, you, you got to play for a small bet. So queen 10 off is not raising ever. But it's doing a little bit with the spade. You also, you got to look at it a little bit shallower with SPR wise. Like you need to make it like 15 or 14 effective. That's what of, I was going to say, because well, the small bet, if you use the large bet, that'll line up the SPR better. You understand what I'm saying, Louis? There's a third person in the pot, so the proportions are a little bit different. Okay, so bet bigger? No, 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 no. The, the effective SPR is going to be shallower. Yeah, but if you bet bigger, that'll reduce the SPR, right? Yeah. It's going to change his range, but yeah, you could look at that too. Well, he only really bets small, so we'll say bets three, maybe. It's like... It just knows we're up against aces here. The bigger he bets, yeah. 
The bigger it bets, the more we flat. So it's more of a just a well. Call. Can you can you do it the way that Galen asked? Yeah. Well, you see what you see what I'm saying though is like there's yeah. eight big blinds in the pot already, and there's 14 behind, so the proportions are a little bit different than you're representing with that sim. I looked at both, right? I'm you're not, not you're not understanding. No, but yeah, but the bet Louis, size changes the action. What when you bet when he bets three, he only has aces, so that's going to influence our call range. You got to go to MTT. Go to change the effective stack size. You have 17. You got to make it like. I don't know, 14. 14. 14. Yeah, 14 is good. Now, this will be more representative because now you can use small... the And then go 1.8. Yeah, now this will be truly representative of like what we're kind of looking at. So now we have some frequencies of jamming here. So with the, with the Queen of Clubs. With the Queen of Clubs. So this, this is pretty time. close to what he's experiencing there. Yeah, but still majority call. Yep. I I like the rook. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I'm I'm just there's merit is what I'm kind of getting at here. So, you know, you could definitely call. You could jam, whatever. You you can be a knit and call if you want. This shallow, I would be shocked. I think you're just running yeah, your equity just, here, Louis. There's nothing. Man. Put it in. Hit it. Make the nuts. We were so close to a straight flush. You almost, you had too many outs on the turn there. Like, I'm surprised you won this hand with as many outs as I you had, had too, on this turn. Too many outs, man. Surprising you hit. Uh, okay. This is, this is tricky. I think in PKO land, you can justify a jam here. I don't like a jam. I think it's, what a, do you, what, yeah, well, it's, it's going to be a fold or a jam, right? I'm just the EV, the equity would, or the EV of those situations would be close. I think it's, I a, like, yeah, I like folding. I think I folding's like good. Like you open EP, EP flats, this guy jams into us. It's like, ugh. Hey, that's a good flop. I like a call here, I think, flopping the nuts. And I also like the call. I think you just call again, right? Well, Honestly, I would probably play it the same way. I usually take aggressive turn actions. Yeah, I like that as well. The king. Spicy king. Uh, do you guys agree that out of position, we should take more aggressive uh, turn actions? I think before the equity completes on boards, it's oft, it's important to kind of get value from his draws that he could be double barreling and polarizing with. Also, before so, you look at that, you want to have a grip of textures and actions based on textures because that matters a lot more. So for example, here in general, the motion on monotone boards, you don't do big bets. You don't do much raising at all. And at this SPR, <clears throat> Like, what is it for at low SPR when you have the nuts like this here you do everything you can to keep the opponent there so let's... yeah you do you do slow it down quite a yeah, bit yeah I'm curious what the check raise frequency is on a turn I, I think it's going to be really low you think I would yeah. be surprised I think it's going to definitely take some aggressive action on the turn pure call on the turn oh look at that yep but on the flop we have the forty percent raise small. We have a yeah. click service. Bet yeah, but as we said the previous hand, the primary action is to call. Yeah. And if we call the turn, do we also check the river? Yeah. <clears throat> That's a good question. I would Maybe wonder that. I think so. <laughs> you might donk jam it. <laughs> I think it really depend on the river, like. Give it right. a brick, like two of make it you're like gonna, the three of hearts or you're something. Do a lot of checking, I think. Yeah, this will be interesting. I bet you jam. Ooh, check still. So. Wow, pretty savagery. Yeah. So yes, you check. You check and you pray. Check and pray. Please don't check. <laughs> so like for me, when I get check raised on the turn, it's just like. 
to, in my mind, like it's almost always just too right. much. Like for this guy, it's really easy here to get off the hook. We really like your opponent is a bit out of line here because I think anyone willing to win money at this game would fold here. King Jack, no spade. See, we're also kind of like, I don't know, we're discounting the PKO effect here. Like they are going to agree, they are going to continue a bit wider to get maybe. Movies. But I don't know if it really influences the action that much. I don't call I enough here, probably. What about you? Uh, I stepped away. One sec. I'm yeah, jamming. Again, 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 25 effective, probably. That's an jamming. early position raise you can call. Yeah. What are you, what are you calling with, Jax? Yeah. <clears throat> I think I'm as you approach... Line, it's okay. I was going to say, as you approach the button it becomes more and more of a raise, especially in a PKO, man. Like, you cover the guy. I like this. Big betting on this texture, or this hand, one pair. Like, you know what? This texture is going to get aces to check a lot, and it's not for, like, we're trapping. It's like this is a disaster of a texture. Tens and jacks will size up, though, right? I like this, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, their calling ranges are going to be very condensed around these middling boards. You're double blocking the absolute nuts. Like they're just going to stack off with a 10 here or like a nine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, or nine, seven. <laughs> yeah. But we get there. Yeah. 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 I, I tell you when MTTs. Um, raise. <clears throat> bet. Yeah, I bet. Got to probe this. Bet like two. Why small? Why not? Oh, large? Yeah, I think you bet big. Probe the turn pretty big there, I think. Is this so not like, a raise? Free flop. You, um, you want to raise your offsuit stuff there more than your suited stuff. The deeper you get, the more yes. suited stuff just limps. Yes. Whoever said that is correct, I think. I'm not raising this preflop. I'm playing. Um, I'm playing limp call here a lot. Okay, because it's a majority raise here. Preflop, seventy percent of the time. So it's going to be a triangle here. I think. Just we got to be a bit deeper to just flat it. Uh, preflop, small blind. Yep. Yeah, it's on the uh, the bottom end of that little blob there of strong enough. And honestly, my offsuit A, I don't really raise with that because it's like the bottom of my limb call range. Whereas everything else is the top of my limb call range. Well, you also have to think, though, like here, when we're looking at this, these suited combos represent a quarter of what you're seeing here in the offsuit branch. So... Like three quarters of a full three quarter frequency of a suited combo is still like less than, you know, half of an offsuit branch. Yeah. So it's like queen eight offsuit is the primary aggressor compared to this one. Where you've got 16 combos compared to the four combos. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also like if you look at your limping range, uh, this is like the worst limp calls you're going to make. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's why I think if you probably... limp jack seven racing. off, you don't call back the race. So you like raising the offshoot eights, LP? Uh, I just said this is the bottom of my limping range. Oh, limp call. Okay, so you limp call uh, that. This is the, the bottom of my calling range when I limp. Limp, you face a raise, and then these are my worst calls. And then these I raise because it's easier because it's straight up junk. But yeah, I mean, this is fine. Play. But after it goes check, check, this is like one of the best lead cards you have in the deck. I would be betting like five or six here. Yeah, it's pretty much a mandatory bet, I think. Probably going to be pure. I agree I with the bet. I, I just think it's smaller. No, you need to Ten. blast. Hey, wow. All right. I yeah. was wrong. Yeah, it's a big bet. When you probe a big bet, I don't find the over bet here. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see myself over betting here. I, I mean, like, okay. A six into eight, fine, but 10 into eight, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not doing it primarily. 
But so it's like you have ten high. You picked up basically one of the best turn cards in the deck for you. Yeah. Like you need fold equity or you need to hit. Also think about this this way, okay? If you hit your scan card on the on the river by some miracle, okay, you get it all. You be a, you want to be able to play for stacks. Yeah, you it's gonna know. happen every now and then. You're gonna hit it, like a tricky nine or like a diamond, and then next thing you know, this is why you need to bluff the turn when you pick up equity. I mean, you probably have forty percent equity here versus range on this turn card if he has a pair. Yeah, very often, a very strong strategy, if you're looking at barreling turn, if you pick up equity, barrel turn. If you don't pick up equity, don't barrel it. That, yeah, I usually, I, I usually barrel on these turns, but yeah. given that he checked the flop, I think I was going for a check raise on this turn card. Yeah, You know, I, I, don't, I don't hate that. I don't hate that at a small frequency. Like, I, I think playing check jam here is probably not crazy. You just have 10 high, man. Like, yeah. you have a hard time winning mm -hmm. when you brick. I don't, yeah. I don't I, like your turn raising strategy from what we've seen. I would rather have you check raising flops. Yeah, yeah. turn and probes. I, turn probes are super effective when they miss a C bet on the flop. Like you can just get away with so many bluffs yeah. too, and they fold. So you really and want I, to be barreling a lot on the turn. Yeah. Also, I don't like to plan a check raise after he checks when he should probably be betting. What do yeah, we bet like, on the river? Uh, I think he checked, or did he Your bet three? Grinds? You gotta go. Yeah, bigger. this is too small. I think you gotta get one yeah. big street in when you got when you get the flush here. Yeah, we're just compound compounding mistakes anyway. So I think it starts from the. <clears throat> need to bet. Louis, real quick on that last hand too. When I was talking about the the ten eight, the suited. Uh, I, I noticed on GTO it likes the off suit stuff more when the effective stacks are more lower, like 30 bigs, 25 bigs. I was just kind of looking at that on my GTO. I, I agree with you, Cody, but it's more like King Jack off, right? Or like uh, Ace like even off. with like even with like on like 30 bigs, 25 bigs, 10 8 suited there is just flatting and then calling, and then 10 8 off is more uh, raising there, yeah. like 3.5 with 30 bigs. Okay, and this year we were deeper. Is that is that the difference? Okay, um, I like it that's small here. I think it's good. Turn. I like a big polarized bet now. Almost pop. This is. I, I think that's good, Louis. I think a big bet here is in order. Yeah. Wait, did he see bet the flop? Yeah. And then turn. Oh no, turn I think I think the flop should be mostly check when you flop top set. Oh wow, well, you're right, Joey. It, no, it's a majority bad, but it's almost it's 40 percent checking, right? heavy check frequency. I think the driving factor is whether you have the heart or not. And we have the heart, so we can check a bit more often. Seems good. But if he see bet, he has bet larger on the on the turn, that turn. No, I would agree, Joey. Honestly, the machine said the turn half pot is preferred. So, oh, really? Okay. So, I like a big bet here. Yeah, I like three and a half or so. I think that'd be this fine. Is this is okay. I don't think this is bad, but I would go bigger personally. Oh, he went about what, 40%? <clears throat> yeah. He went yeah. small. Mixing, but it's using big sizes a lot, right? Yeah, you can use big sizings. When you can use big sizings, I think leaning that way is smart if you're going to have a, a mixed strategy. Yeah. This, so the turn card is actually a pretty good barrel, I think. Like, um, okay. you shouldn't have too much king-queen. Yeah. You're, you're blocking king-queen. He doesn't have ace king. You've got the heart. Like I, I think he's got a lot to call with. This is a gin card, right? And I see you doing that. Like the way you think about your turn, like when you have the king of hearts, you want to bet more and more. I think that's really good. Yep, I think I think that is a big driving factor here. Um, this is this is <laughs> this is not fun. You just call. You got a bluff catch. Yeah. Oh. My. Yeah, you got. See when you. Oh no you, no. So when you check the turn, 
I think when you check the turn, you you really need to be bluff catching here. It's mixing, honestly, 50-50. Well, on a four liner, it's always good to fold. Keep that in mind. Yeah. And you avoid that by betting turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I was gonna say. You can always check back river often. If they dock, if you go bet bet and they still dock, it's an easier fold to be honest. I would check I... back there. What about you guys? I'm torn between jamming and checking back. I think versus a limp, man, like <sighs> I kind of want to put this guy in some. Yeah, I'm ripping it. It's a booty, right, Toe? Let's go. Yeah, it is a booty. Wow. You guys. Oh, it's raising. It's yeah. Not the race. Okay. I was going to check back. Suited. I think this kind of want to realize. Yeah, that. no, that's too much. Jamming is no good. So, David, I do have a question. What stage – do you have any bearing on what stage of the tournament this is? Like, how many chips is a blind right now? That'll help <laughs> us out. I think we are in the money. Oh, this is early. Or, it's only 2,500. Or, 2, You're or still close to the money. Yeah, okay. very early. You've got, like, 11 – you got 12 starting stacks or so, or is this the double stack? Yeah, no. Uh, 12 starting stacks. Okay. 50 big blinds, 12 starting stacks. You should be, eight, I think, right after the money or close to it. Yeah, me too. We are close to the money or right after the money. Maybe it is a pressure all in here if we are not in the money yet. Uh, you got to fold. Happy days. Easy call. Oh, that's not fun. What is this turn, man? No post flop effort here. Happy days. All I right. think you just jam. Yeah, yeah you just yeah, jam. just rip it. Oh. Chop it up. Oh, get me again. Why so big? Well, yeah, yeah. What was this sizing? That's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a misclick. Yeah. The first time you did it, so it's probably just a bit. Yeah. Probably. Okay. We hope, David, that this was a misclick. I mean, I mean there, are some, hey, there are some may, situations where you can make If a it's not a misclick, but... it's quite terrible. He, yeah. he may have also misread the, the table and thought there was a limp. Maybe could have thought he was small blind opening. I mean, there's a lot of shit there, right? Yeah. Dave? What the mm, hell? Nah. Yeah, this isn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, I think you're supposed to... It's a double oh, misclick. Like, you just lost this ace king here. You chopped, so you're tilted now. You didn't get the boot. I think he went to the bathroom, and his significant other was sitting at the table for this hand. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to tilt Louis if you keep playing like that. He's going to lose this, it. What is this, David? What are you doing? <laughs> Is that know. how you win tournaments? Maybe. You lay trash yeah, PKO and maybe. stuff like that? Yeah. This, so, so how about this? Let's, this let's should be like two this. big blinds maximum. Yeah. Well, let's talk about this. Why would you not want to make this bet size? Because it's, a, think, it's terrible. You get your opponent to play perfectly. Well, yeah, that's essentially we're saying that yeah that we're, you're saying yeah, he only I'm calls thinking. you when he when he has you beat and then you right. him away from any future equity. Exactly. So this spec size accomplishes nothing. It allows him to basically double up when he has pot, when he has a ten, and it tells him to fold when he has anything else. Yeah. So if you look at the new advanced masterclass by uh, Jonathan Little and Justin Saliba, one of their first few classes, they discuss a pair of boards. So here, if you, if you watch, it's only 15 minutes, by the way. Uh, they say that you gain a lot of EV if you just bet one big right here. So oh. usually like on pair of boards, you can range bet small, but like Justin proved that if you, instead of betting small, you go for a one big blind bet, you can almost always do it, and it's closer to GTO, whereas betting small, yeah. good enough, but it's betting well, one is closer to GTO. Yeah, one allows you to bet that it, yeah. range. It allows so, us to do it almost always. So this is a one big blind bet. How, how, however, can I just add, yeah. it, it has to go up a slight bit because of his large raise preflop. 
the one big blind works with a min raise pre flop. That's actually a pretty good consideration. Charlie. I would I would agree with that, Joey. Because, because yeah. one one big blind is yeah. one big blind is about twenty five percent with a min raise. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking about two, about a twenty five percent bet. Yeah, but this machine here doesn't have the the, the one. It has only twenty five. Yeah. Whereas oh, yeah. Justin ran really a couple of sims for spots and. There's more EV and going even smaller. Yeah, yeah well, one big I'm okay with that. When a min open, it's about 18%. But yeah, I get what you're saying. So yeah. This is a disaster, baby. Well, it's like, it's going to be a positive EV situation because you're just going to take down the blinds a lot. But this is def this is far from the optimal play. Like if you bet one, mind. then he spas into you, then you capture. Sometimes he has bluffs. When you do that, he never calls off with a bluff. He never has bluffs, right? Like he's not calling with a three here. If he has three five, is he ever calling here? No, probably not. No, right? Like you're, you're just. Uh, he he shouldn't have pocket pairs here because he would have jammed him pre. It's just he has nothing to call with. So that was a this is, this is this is too big, man. This is way yeah. too big. Well, he goes. Oh. He puts everyone all in. No, he does not. Oh no, like that, it's too big. Like he's thirty effective with this guy under the gun. Yeah, this EP. is a three bad small, right? Yeah, I would three yeah. bet small here. The guy opens from 14 About, bigs, right? So no, he, he opens from 30 bigs. Or did I misread that? Oh, yeah, I there's an opened. open over here off of a 14 big blind stack. No, a 30, the 32 big blind stack. Opens. Oh, the chips get, okay. You got the chips look like and, they're in front of the other guy. Sorry. And Ken, even if even if that be the case, you are 50 effective with the guy behind. Like, um, and it, Yeah, it should be like a... Five big blind. You're toasting three bet. when you do that. You're just like uh, taking EQT away from the top of your range. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it, Louis. Like, you can play better is essentially what he's saying. I like a call here. Happy day. Mm, you, all, you, all we needed was one club. No post flop effort again. The flop looked really good. I was happy oh, with that flop. Yeah. I was counting chickens on that flop. I was bit um, bounty already. On. I'm all I, in here. Yeah, just put them all in. Yep, that's good. Oh, yeah, had an open fold off of that stack. This I, is great. This is great. Beautiful. All right, we can see a flop here. Yeah, For I sure. think you can see a flop here. What's your worst call here with the offsuit 10? 10 5. I'm calling all my offsuit 10s, I think. Well, no, no, I'm sorry, ignore <laughs> that. I think you're right. You're, I was thinking across uh, to the right, not, not up and down. I think maybe 10 7 is probably the line. Yeah, yeah, aren't we in an ICM? Not necessarily enough to yeah. matter. Well, I'm thinking Chip EV. I'm 10 5 0. Yeah, but right, Ken. this is after this is probably around 10% field. 10 7. Too loose. Yeah, zero EV, zero EV, right? I think I'm on, I mean, 10 5 is too loose. I think I'm even. Um, what other justification are you going to find to justify your 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 nitty fold? I'm a nit, you know it. No one knows it. People You're never folding this in a PKOLP. People think I'm a maniac, but I'm a big nit. I'm a nit in heart, at heart. Oh my! I mean, check this raise. is a pretty good check raise hand. <laughs> it's short. Yep. Yeah, like five and three quarters, something like that. No, 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 no. It's a draw. We're too short. SPR is too short. If you yeah, raise, you raise. You're like, oh my goodness, I have to I, I wonder what Queen Ten's doing. If Queen Ten's actually doing it with the over card. Ten seven, I bet does. I don't think we have much raising here. We can raise flush draws directly, right? Maybe. I don't need. This is tricky. Well, what we have a. Uh, if you, you want to raise a single club, you can raise like the ace. No. Look at the range, man. You How can much tell. Is the range we is can check raising. I bet you it's pretty high. Twenty some percent. Oh my god, uh, that's not it. 
Three, so it's not huge. Uh, so it's raising Three, 10, 15, like 16 percent. Yeah, Th this is typical. This is not too shabby. But and like, if we look, look at, at this, we can use the flush draws. That's what look I at thought. Queen 10. Look at Queen 10 off. So 10 7 is a tiny bit more than 10 8. The 10 or the, the clubs, the big clubs. Yeah. So it's basically the same hand he has, but with the over card, which is important. Yeah, exactly. We can pick like I thought Ace Ten with the a club would be in there, but no. Look at this. Too strong. Look at King King Ten offsuit is going to be attractive too. Yeah. So like with this, you can do King Ten if you really want to. King but Ten the with one the thing, club is easy, right? Upper yep. dangler, the club, the blah blah blah, the gut shot. Mm-hmm. About the eight two, you find the eight two there. Mm, I'm not too eight two. <laughs> that was a big one. Mm, bet the call, yeah. Check, check. Then I on the river. I think you got to give up. I don't think so. Yeah, King's no good. It's not our no. card. Okay. It's not our card. Yeah, it's a give up. Goes for the bet. I like that. Check, check on the darn. We shouldn't do it from the big blind. That's the issue. That's a mistake. And what well, size if we bluff are we using here? Like, I don't know. It just might be like if we bluff, it might be all ends. Uh, no, six or three. Those are like the smaller bets. Okay. Not many all ends. Is it because he's so capped? I mean, there's a lot of overbetting there. It's part of the strategy. You just don't have a huge part component. This is a bit spicy. I would I prefer to call it. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay, I'm okay with this as long as you're intending to call off that 20 big blind stack. But mm -hmm. um, I think calling is gonna be the optimal <laughs> choice. Oh All right, sad. just jams. Just yeah, jams. Go. Well, how many effective are you? This says 20 effective, and you're actually like 30 effective, so this is a little misleading. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> it's a it's a little misleading. So, so like nice. raising with the intent to call off is probably okay. Calling is probably okay. I don't think you want to jam with the guy. But see, yeah, okay, I, 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 I hate this. I I hate this now. <laughs> yeah, I hate this now because it's like um, if you're gonna raise this, you need to call this off. Otherwise, you're just torching equity with the, a hand this strong. This yeah. is why we didn't. Didn't want a three bet ace queen earlier because are you, here, you can't Dave? call it four bet. Are you here, Dave? <clears throat> hmm? What the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> I don't know, clicking buttons. You're no, registering, wow. you sign up for a poker tournament, you get ace jack suited. So as a bounty, you get here and you fold. So, yeah, you don't want to raise to have to fall, but I mean, it's possible you're on the bubble, I suppose. You said you were close earlier. I mean, that's the only reason I could think of falling, but if you're going to fall, you can't raise, like Galen said. Yeah. You just don't want it to raise the, fold. It makes the EV of calling way, 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 way more attractive if you're ever folding this. I'm always calling here. It's just a um, lot easier. To are you called on the bubble? Yeah. Well, you don't want to fold and you don't want to uh, treat you that. just don't raise so also you, don't, you say avoid this spot by not raising or also if this is on the bubble i think ace jack's a pure call yeah it's fine. that's what we're getting at joey yep Prefer to call. okay the hands you uh would be raise folding there are like ace three offsuit or something if you really wanted to have raise folds so i have a, another note for you david and we're going to add to our notes. Okay. We like to raise suited aces almost every time, right? Yeah, it's a good note. Not ace do suited. Keep that in mind. You yeah, can't especially for a low jack. You're still pretty early ace position there. Ace suited is the exception. It's the Dude, only ace that is not going to raise. You got to open it from middle position. You got to open it from middle position under the gun. That's true. Yeah. Middle position that's in there. <clears throat> oh, low, low Jack starts cutting that out. Really? No, 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 yes. no, 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 It's in there. It's in there. High Jack and farther, you can eat ace, ace two's good. Under ace the gun is the only spot. The only spot I fold, it's under the gun. <clears throat> Early so position. I'm looking at, 
All right, here, I'm looking at Lojack, 100 big blinds it call it raises, 80 it raises, 70 it raises, 70 it mixes, to your credit. But it still raises some, 60 it raises, 50 it raises, 40 it raises, 35 it raises, 30 it raises. Uh, like it, it, oh, well, okay, about 20 big blinds and less, that's when it starts cutting out. <clears throat> 20 big blinds, you are correct. It is starting to cut out. Yeah. But uh, 30 big blinds, you guys played that. Yes. Yeah, dude, in, a, in this position, you joking okay. me? In a heartbeat. All right. You have to. You can fold off one of the gun, right? Yes. I will fold. I fold it in early position. I open it from one of the but gun. But once you get to middle position, all the suited aces play. So here, I see that's not. Uh, checking is probably okay, but. Is it a small C bet? I mean, ace high boards, I know we see bet a lot versus small blind, but it the machine in our ways it. might make it size up a little. Ace king, maybe. Machine well, it. I think with the ace king, when we do bet, we can bet larger. So it's going to have some checking. When you bet larger, you check more. What are you? I think you're looking at the wrong range. Definitely. It has folds. We can't open fold. It's betting big most of the time. Yeah, I thought so. Just because there's two broadways. If it was like ace, nine, three, then it's going to be small, right? Like. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I think ace, king boards, we get to bet large. So when we bet large, we have to check some too. Yeah. It's just more polarized, right? Yeah. Well, if we go check, check the turn, we could bet, but it's a yeah, big dub, double flush. You're going to go like, yeah, larger. Especially when you don't block any of them. Yeah, I think you want to see a flop. Ooh, this oh, is. Oh, no. I think this is aggressive. This is a bit too aggressive. Like, yeah. if this was Queen 10 suited, maybe we could justify this, but right. this is a bit aggressive, I think. Yeah, this, this is out of line. A disaster. Why would you. So it it's in? still positive EV, but it's this is not the optimal decision. Like, Let's see what the the worst queen he's doing this with, because he will have some jams here. I mean, queen nine or queen ten. It's not yeah. queen H is too far out of line. It should be queen ten, I think. So I the bad special queen ten suited is in there, right? Queen jack suited. What do you do with queen jack suited? Yeah, you can um, I like ripping it. I think. What do you do with king ten suited? Uh, definitely ripping. So kings are better than queens here because we're queens are kind of blocking what we're targeting, right? You know that's that range stands and and adds up, right? Yeah. How many ways is it going to be? Like jack ten, ten nine might even go with it. So I'm looking at it. It's um <clears throat> a similar arrangement to this. It's why, jamming why, like. Why are you nines. looking? We're asking questions. Well, I just answered a bunch of the questions. Oh. I mean, do we want more answers? No, we're good. I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say I'm, I'm curious on too wide with ten nine suited, honestly, because I would. So it's a pip point. wide, honestly. Queen nine's in there. Queen nine, king nine, jack nine. They're all reasonable jams multi way here at twenty five effective. Does ten nine get in there? Ten nine does not. Okay, I'm queen nine. A bit wide. Queen nine does actually jam here. What are you guys on? So 10 nines heads up. Okay. What are you guys talking about? This is not the right range, I don't think, is it? 25 effective. So you got hijack, small blind. Yeah, I'm looking at this in uh, PFA. So 10 and, nine is a jam. Well, the ranges in PFA are different than this. I don't know. The, uh, are you guys, are you telling me you look at queen nine suited here and you say, oh yeah, good jam, let's go? No, I no, I don't. I no, don't. I'm saying. But what I what I am saying is the equities are razor thin. If it's telling you to jam in one and calling in another, it's yeah. going to be close. But look at this. We got the king ten suited wrong. We got the queen ten suited wrong. It's not a jam. And then yeah, queen. I had, jack, I had jack ten and ten. I got half of them right. 
Ten nine, Ken. What the hell is wrong with you? And the, what what is it? This. It's the nuts. Is it? You look at this. You see nine ten suited. You're like, okay. Let's go. Yep. That's a rebuy. I don't get it. Uh, it's a it's a freeze out. It, jokes it's on you, Louis. Yeah. It's a freeze out. So you. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, three bath heavy here. What about you guys? Uh, I, 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 I think this mixes. Here. It, it mixes. I think I'm very you're, you're okay calling, okay raising. <clears throat> no calling is for nets. Uh, four big blind and multi way like this. This is not closing the action. I'm just. <clears throat> It's a good fold. That one. Uh, Don't check on pair boards or range betting. Yeah, just you got to bet small. You got to bet small, man. Yeah, bet one. This is just like you put yourself in a spot where you should never be. Oh, my goodness. Why not bet yourself on the flop if you're going to call turns like this? Well, if he's bluffing, I'll slow him down. <laughs> Well, you made your bed. Now you get it. Now David is made your bed. He's call. supposed to be bluffing small pairs here. So I mean, I don't know if I, I just hate this. <clears throat> it's a, it's not a good spot, right? You'd want to have a diamond in your hand to make this call. The nine pairing on the turn. I mean, is this a call? Is this even? What a are call? you? Uh, what are you gonna do, man? This guy has got all the chips in the tournament, so he should be raising a lot of his asex preflop to isolate you so he's already strapped on asex a little bit like i don't know man like he's gonna have a lot of bluffs here this is not fun Dang, yeah but he's not short on 9x and you would want to have a diamond to call yeah he has all asex 9x but he does have a lot of everything else so he has a lot of junk too yeah, you you check flop, you're like you capped yourself like you kind of make your life miserable here because you check this flop <laughs> I mean, I would just fold and save my chips. <laughs> so so yeah, you get him yeah, to fold his pocket twos here probably, right? I mean, he's got to fold a nine here. Like, if you do this, he's got to fold a nine. No way. Dude, he's only got to put in 12 more bigs to win a pot of 55, 56. We all agree with this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this is spicy, David. Very, 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 very No spicy. way are they folding a nine. No, I, what the hell are you doing? I don't think we need a jam here. Like, it, it doesn't accomplish anything if you can't get a nine to fold. And I think Ken's right. Like, the guy's priced in with a nine. I was targeting a nine to fold. You just beat all his bluffs yeah. by calling. If you just call, you beat all his bluffs. That's good enough. You don't have to turn your hand into a bluff. There, oh, there's you a, have a massive bounty on your head, and this guy has an infinite... There, this guy is going to eat you alive if he has it. There's an old saying in poker. No one ever folds a full house. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. The target thing on here is a disaster. There might be times that they should. He's only folding but, bluffs here, which you beat by calling. So yeah. you can either call or fold. Like, call or fold, yeah. You never do this. Oh, my goodness, Dave. Did it work? He folded? He folded, but he never had a nine. Right. So, th yeah, this guy had air, air, yeah. complete air ball. This is Maybe extremely guys... spicy, Dave. Man. Well, at least now he thinks you're probably slow playing like trip bases when he hit the flop. So, I mean, to take that back one step, I guess you do beat flushes that got there on the river, but still. No, you don't beat with the ace. Yeah. You beat flushes as in they should fold. Oh well, I mean, does a flush get the fold? It's mixing falls and folds in the river. Look, well, look at the EV. He's but, like, he's got one point four of jamming in there that you just left out. Yeah, <laughs> but we're also never in the street. Yeah, it's a very uh very small branch. Yeah. And mistake mistake is on the flop. You should see bet here. Simple as that. And <clears throat> when you see bet here, it just folds, and you save yourself a lot of uh, troubles. Especially for you, Dave. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, all right. Real quick question. If we see bet on the flop and the nine pairs on the turn, do we double barrel it? Yeah, definitely. You just about double barrel small, I think. What do you do with the nays here, Joey? You bet small on the flop, then you bet small again on the turn, right? Yeah. So the same goes with your bluffs, I think. And this is a very good one. Upper dangler to the nine. Uh, yeah, I, I would like a double here. And then when we double barrel, it just goes check, check on the river and it just went. Um, you got a call. No, uh, you got a call. David. You got a call. It's too good of a hand. This is uh, this a suited one gapper is just not going to fold here. Nope. You're, you're so crazy <clears throat> and so nippy at the same time. It's so impressive. Pocket kings. Okay. Okay. These are the pots you need late in tournaments. That's a little bit frisky, David. I'm okay with this. It's kind of whatever. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a bit loose. I think you're a bit but, loose. Yeah, oh, I hope you it's, it's only loose by maybe a pip, pip or two. So it's not that. It's not horrible. I just. I what? You you stick around and call pots with, with this thing here. You open. Well, dude, you're not opening this to fold it when you make a king. So, yeah. yeah. Yikes. You scam yourself here. King six all. Just curious. It's a pip and a half. I mean, your results are in. He lost his hand, but the guy, he's going to win that pot a lot of times when they barrel bluffs twice. And if you're up. on the button, I mean, I don't mind it. Right? No, on, on the button, I raise it. On the button, it's on the cuffs, but on the cutoff, <clears throat> I think it's too loose. But although there are circumstances where you might want to start loosening up. So why are we three X in here? Exactly. You did it once again, right? You had a scheme. You went 3.5. Now you have <clears throat> to go 3X. Are you trying to signal your, to your no. friends that you have a good day? I learned this the day that I do this, maybe by, by autopiloting. I Jesus shouldn't do this. Christ. Oh, but you did it specifically with two really good hands. Yeah. 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 And he... Let's see what you do yeah, on the flop. Let's I, see if you I jam think... flop. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, what he they're doesn't... trying to say is you just want to standardize your pre flop sizings. Um, do we ever limp aces from the cutoff? No. 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 That's not you can change your best sizing if you're deeper, you can open big. Like if everyone's playing 100 effective here, three X <laughs> is fine, but you're shallow, you just go two X here. So to help you out, David, um, if you're very shallow in certain scenarios, you do limp bases sometimes. But for this scenario that you're specifically, if you're asking specifically about this one, no, you don't. But you'd also have to have other hand that's your limps to protect your limping range when you do that too well, they, right? well yeah ex well exactly you yeah. can check raise this some frequency can you i was thinking about it what's attractive here the hearts the overcard we get a better king to fold yep the pair board back door i think flat. it's gonna like uh it's gonna like the worst ones a little well, bit well you're right? not gonna get a better king to fold though i don't think you're folding king i mean they like they might be they might fold king king nine. Nine. what do you think king nine does what do you think king jack of club does yeah they're, they're not gonna fold yeah but we have a, we have a really really wide range here and i think we're going to be bluffing from the bottom up this so is gonna mix i think this one might be a little bit too high up in the range that it might just call. You don't have to win it on the flap either. Like you had, you get them that fold on turns and rivers. So, like I think, pretty sure this is going to mix. Ken is right. It does mix some. It folds mostly though. Mostly. Yeah, and I'd rather raise than call. Honestly, it's just a more effective way to get to win the chips to be aggressive. I'm calling. Yeah, you got to see a flop, man. Oh, that's a good flop. Uh, I like calling. You're letting him off the hook again. Yeah, it's no good. Yeah, it's already so a, it's already a really small SPR. Just call your bluffs. What do you check raise bluff in there? All in. Well, maybe nine ten. 
but it's more so like what is his value range continuing with like it's just over pairs basically like you're either coolering the guy or you're never getting the rest of the chips here like, yeah this is just a call david what the heck are you doing this is just a call yeah, yeah. definitely definitely a call yeah. Because the board is dry and it's low. Like it doesn't connect well with his three betting range, except for his over pairs. And um, you want to give him opportunity to bluff. Yeah. And you, and you basically block his best value that he could probably have. <clears throat> right. So the top set is specifically bad. So um, you could have probably three bet this. Maybe. And we're short yeah, though. Is, so Colin's this, probably fine too. But. This is a fine option to mix. It definitely mixes, I think. Yeah, I like three bet in the off suited person better than the suited person. I think it's too strong to three bet. I don't know, man. Take a look. I think it may mix. I don't know. I, I, I do call here mostly, but with my theory hat on, I think it probably does mix. All in. Holy crap. 25 bigs. Yeah, we are. This Missed is good. It. Yeah, it's king, it's queen, jack. 25 bigs. Makes sense. So we should be all in here. Yeah, I don't find enough jamming, to be honest, in that spot. What do you mean? I said I don't find enough jamming in that spot myself. Hey, it's king. It's easy, right? Yeah, for sure. Very easy. I wonder if like ace king may be too strong. No, it just jams. The suited one is where it starts mixing. Ace king and queen is jack. Yeah, okay. I find ace queen. I find ace king. I find these middling pairs. Bad special and the, and the suited Broadway ones. Yeah, I, yeah, those two. Although I probably would get more aggressive with the king queen too. Okay, so you pull the trigger at twenty. This is good. I like a raise. All right, multi way. In position, I would probably bet small here. Yeah, I think you could bet small or check. You could, for sure. Absolutely. I would check now, I think, just because small blind defender with the big blind behind them, like, they got something pretty good here, probably. Uh, what do we do here? Do I hate this? I don't know if I do. Because he's going to have, like, you You still get – you put a lot of pressure on jack-10 – um, yeah, we've beaten Jack Ten. Uh, the Queen gonna fold yet? Like, if you can get a, get in the fold of Queen here, I think it's great. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if he has flats with, I guess, under pairs, five, sixes, sevens. But I mean, pretty narrow range we're targeting, I think. And like, I he has think... a ton of folds. <laughs> his range is so tight, free flop, and he folds a lot of it. Like all his bricks just fold with the big blind behind him, right? So he doesn't have much here that's not good. He's got like some nine ten, some jack ten. He could have some diamonds. I don't like. Yeah, this. suited a six, a six diamonds for sure. You know, like when you bet the turn here, I, I actually I don't know if I hate finishing it off here on the river, just because like you should have a lot of king x here. But this is this is dicey, man. Dicey. Not having a diamonds yeah. probably nice. It's going to be dicey. It's just really difficult to look at, try to surmise hands, I think. and Just remove the pots. big blind. Yeah, move the, move, remove yeah, the big blind. That's going to dramatically change the small blinds flop. The defending range is the thing. Dramatically change it. Wow. Because he's not going to defend error. Told you I'd try to get caught up as much. Speaks before the big one. Yeah, he acts first. So, I mean, like, he's going to defend when he's going to defend versus the big blind being there, right? It's not like he makes the decision after the big blind folds. So, a, flop, a small flop bet is fine. Mm -hmm. The three pairs. I wouldn't be surprised to see doubles here. So, my point is, when we see bet flop, small blind is going to defend. He's going to fold more than normal. Yeah, that's true. On the flop, he is. He's going to continue with a stronger range. You're right. So this but is where I, I think this is that... going to fall apart a lot. Two separate chunks. 
So it's mainly a check. Wait, this is out of position. Is this? This is the so small like, blind. Check the small blind. He's got under pairs in range still. I think they all go away. Like some of these low uh, connectors are probably all gone. Unless they're diamonds. Um, well, we we won't know unless Louis checks and makes a bet again. Okay, sorry, Joey. We have a lot of back noise. Unmute yourself whenever you want. Uh, check on the turn. Yep. It's so five. five. It Can does barrel. Double Can double barrel. Now, you got to finish the simulation, though. After you double barrel, do you triple it off? <coughs> Excuse me. What was the river? King of hearts. Yeah, I mean, it's just dicey because like, I, I, I'm still convinced that like small blinds could have about a third less hands on the river. Just check. Than what we have in this sim. Give up. You don't bluff with these signs on this river. So flop and yeah, turn, yeah. kind of okay. River, punty. The weather is punty in Macedonia. <laughs> I had to get up for work. Did, oh, we did just we... had a bit of back noise. Uh, oh, I know. Yeah, I knew that. But um, the bet, the turn, was it double barreling there in GTO Wizard? Yes. Heads up, yes. You should play check here. And I like the fold when the big blind calls. I think that's good. Is this a bit wide or it's good? It's okay. This is definitely okay. Definitely good. Yeah, it's definitely good. Are you saying you fold Jack 10 from the cutoff, Louie? There's no chance. 17 big blinds with a big booty over my head against into a 150 big blind stack. I mean, this specifically, given that I might, I would tighten up quite a bit here because that guy is going to be here to roll some heads, right? Yeah, but, um, out of for ICM, it makes it more of a fold, but like we don't even know where we're at in the tournament. I don't necessarily no, like that. No, you can't call this guy, man. He's just going to he's gonna wreck you so often here. Yes. yes. Well, we won the yeah. tournament, so maybe we wreck him. Yeah, that's true. He's probably just going <laughs> to donate all of that 160 big blinds to us. Oh, I remember this can... So pre-flop oh. raising is fine. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna love it. Uh, calling the three bet is a disaster. Yeah, it's a minor disaster. No, but it's really it's, bad. It's no, it's no, wide, no. right? Dave asked me not to spare him, so <laughs> okay, Dave, fine. Yeah, look at this here. This is. Is it no? That's a hundred percent fold all day. Yeah, I mean you're folding king ten off, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ace ten off. What are you doing with ace ten off? Ace ten off is a call because it's late position against. Eight. Okay. See, I'm a I'm a little more polite than Louis is with a lot of things, Dave. So if I say like this is probably not good, it's the same as him saying this is fucking terrible. So. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we get the message across, I think when it hurts. It sticks around longer. Oh, you're crazy. David, Jesus Christ, what are you doing now? Dude, honestly, like, what do you expect the guy to do? He called a three bet, like, and he's got a backdoor flush, a gut shot, and middle pair. Right, I think go. you gotta you gotta go here. Scam the guy on the river. Let's go. Dude, you got you got really lucky here. Yeah, no, no, he's not lucky, he's a scammer. <laughs> yeah. I remember this hint. I think if you call that, you got to stack off with it. It's just yep. That's, yep. That's, that's why we don't call it, though. That's why we yep. don't call it, because you don't want to stack off with it. Jesus Christ. They're calling it three bet here with Jack off For a 30 or stack. Yeah. Crazy. Okay. Um, check raise. This is good. The size I, would big. Go, I would go, I would go a little smaller, but I think playing check raise here is good. Seven's probably good. Six to the 6.5 or seven, I guess. 
Eight. Yeah. Six. Yeah. See, it's it's not too bad. Eight six. He's a little large, but it's fine. It's about a big blind big. Oh yeah, it does like the big size mostly. Uh. Okay. So let's think about this for a second. This guy is. What's going to be more profitable, playing call here? Yeah. Or playing four bet here? I he think saw. I like playing call personally. Yeah. He call. just saw us call him up with a jack ten. And we saw he three bet ace ten off, so he's got. Uh, three uh, well, this room. is the other option, right? So, I mean, it is. He calls too wide. It's good, right? So. I think you should go a little smaller out of position. If you yeah, it's too much of your good. stack. Uh. I think I like playing call there. I think it's going to yield you yeah. more chip. Yeah, you just let him off the hook. It never calls. The machine never calls. Well, it jams. Now, honestly, that's what I would have done, to be honest. I don't hate jamming, but I think... Uh, no. We weren't quite deep enough there. to uh, four bet, honestly, without making it really well, awkward and like no, obvious. Obvi like The obvious answer is king, king, four bet, get it in. But I think with the past history with this villain that we just saw like five minutes ago, we get so much more value by just calling there. So I don't think it's a, a C bet without the diamond in our hand. You could probably justify it. He's got two overs in a gutty, but a diamond would obviously but, be the, the preferred not, option. Right? Not three, not three ways. I don't think I bet this three ways. Oh, oh. Check. Start my suit. All right. All ones. You got to continue one street here. Okay. Yeah. Right. It's a bit nitty, but. Yeah, on a paired board, Ace King might still be good. Yeah. So this is the table starts to be empty here. So maybe we're getting uh, deeper in the weeds. Right? This is probably not too bad. It's yeah, I think this is okay. I think this is okay. I'm sure this is probably a hand that draws some some of its bluffs from preflop. I think you would you want to go a smidge bigger if you're going out of position, but I think this is okay. I like and this. I like this. Yep, I like the C bet on the flop too. You have all of the the big pairs, so happy days. Oh, happy days. Uh, you can't. I don't know if you want to fold. No, you can't fold here. This is a four this bet or a call. Nine. This is a this four is bet. A, a four bet or a call for sure. You can't fold. It's too good. Yeah, Ace Five definitely mixes some four bets in. He is. Uh, this guy has three bet you. I mean, Ace Five times. suited. He has three bet you at least four times. So, so you like can you go can go all in here seven percent of the time, or just uh, yeah. <laughs> four bet I, uh, I would. Over special. I would be very cautious at this stage of the tournament doing that kind of shenanigans, but. See. <laughs> yeah, I think we are 11 but, left right now, or 12. Yeah, dude, if it's 11 left, you're definitely never jamming. This is not accurate for this scenario. Okay, we didn't chip up yet, so no final table yet. Final few table, I guess. Dude, yeah, you have like a massive win, stack. Uh, I don't think I like a C bet on the flop. Why? Yeah. This is a this is a good C bet spot. C bet small. Yeah. You just kind of lose the pot when you check here too much. Yeah. You're not converting like your trash like your hand trash. into uh, EV positive EV. You're just letting them go a lot. I like this race. I think it's a good one. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Happy day. Easy life. Easy life. So the click versus the call. What do you like best, Louis? I'm I think going all in. I, mean, that's I, very I am never messing around here because this guy could lose his mind every now and then and just call. And then we see an ace high flop. The next thing you know, he has ace three suited. 
Yeah, that's fair. I, I like the click or the jam, I guess. When I see Jimmy, this, there, this is my money. It belongs to me. I have Kings, a rep. This is GG. This is heads up. This is all the cookies in here now. You want to tell everybody that this is your money. Would and you shove aces as well? Yeah. That's, uh, ace. It, yes. And if. In a freeze out, I think he can call this, but in a PKO, you, you you don't want other people searching for a cheap bounty. Yeah. We're also disrespecting the initial opener. That guy's got 74. Like you you don't need to give him a price to call here. Yeah. You need a raise, I think. So this is good. This is this is good. This is a bit wide, but it's whatever, man. If you're like final table bubble, like this is what I would call a logical expansion. But the way, honestly, the way you're playing post flop, you're not going to be able to convert these type of hands into profitable plays. That's you're right. Playing too, you're playing too passive. Like you should be c betting a flop like this because you have the heart because you interact with the five. Jack high board. Like, Jack high board. Like you need to put this guy in the blender, and if you're not putting this guy into the blender, you don't need to expand with these types you're of costing combos. yourself easy here. Yep. So play check check and okay. Raise. Um, I like calling here this deep final table bubble. I like calling there. I think that's really good. I'm glad you didn't raise. And whenever you're on this kind of spot. Villain checks the turn. I think you need to go bananas. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going big. I'm going big here. Well, okay. So let's think about this for a second. This is a very expensive pot. This is by far the most expensive pot. You can almost like you're going to set yourself up to win the tournament off a spot yeah. like this. So do you want to go something a little more mergy, like 16, and then play really big rivers, or do you want to distribute it on turn and river equally, like pot and then 50 big blinds well, into whatever it is? Um, well, the villain only has 56 left. So about 20, I think, sets up. I, I think, think I would. 20 would looks like 16. it's 20 looks bet, like it's geometric. Checking I would bet here is a disaster. Oh, dude, honestly, checking here is, I can tell you, like, playing check here, you're costing yourself easily 100 bucks in, like, equity. $100, like, you're just burning, burning right here, this close to the end of the tournament. Yeah. Yeah, you, you want to get, you want to set up to get stacks in. Mm hmm Like, honestly, you have a very, very, very strong hand, and you need to get, you need to get big blinds here. Like, okay, he's going to have a hand like queen, We'll say like queen jack of uh, clubs here. Like he's going to call. If he's got ace jack of hearts here, he's going to call. Like so, he's David, gonna I'm going to I'm going to expand my vocabulary for you here. This is a catastrophe. <laughs> Checking here is a catastrophe. All yeah, right? honestly, this is this is probably one of the most expensive like <laughs> 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 okay, uh, man. So what happened? So like, all of his draws don't get there. So now you're not getting paid by basically anything except for a strong ace here. And you go small. He call. He was ace calling jack. you on the turn, man. Yep, that's what I'm saying, dude. Like honestly, ace jack. This is what you're targeting. Like if you bet 16 on the turn and jam the river, you've put this guy into a complete blender. Yeah, your check costs you at least like 20 ish big blinds here. Mm -hmm. Minimum. I, I agree. I agree. Yeah, this is a catastrophe. So, yeah, you you might have been able to get all of the chips off of that guy. Maybe oh doubt God. doubt it, but maybe. Okay, so Dave, uh, what's the best thing that can happen here <laughs> with a pocket pair like this here. What's the best thing that could ever happen? Hit the set. You hit the set. And then if you hit the set, do you want to be heads up or you want to have a bunch of players in the hand? You're right. So, so what, like, what do you think you should do here? Call. I, think I like so calling. This is like my standard strategy because you just want to scam people, right? You want to hit your seven and then find a way to scam somebody. You know, man, like, I don't mind. I think playing aggressive from this spot versus these two player players is very good. 
but this is not the hand to do it for the reasons Louis kind of outlined. Like it's just not going to perform very well. And you, you just, you don't need to do it. You don't need to do it. Your call. Look at this. Easy call. Yeah. Like if you had ace five suited, maybe ace nine suited, maybe ace five off, like those hands, I think are way, way more attractive to apply pressure here. Let's see, like, yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, one big blind or this is good. I would shut it down. I would fold. Yeah, I would fold as well. This guy always has an ace. You don't beat anything here. Yeah, that's fine. Good. This is a good bluff combo. I like raising here. Uh, this is kind of advanced stuff, but you can apply a mountain of pressure to this guy. I don't, I don't like calling. I like folding or raising here. Yeah, go, go on about seven. I don't like calling with this type of hand either. This hand plays very, very easily as a three bet because you're just going to basically get folds. And if you get pushback, you can fold. Um, post flop, you are kind of in no man's land and it's gonna, you're going to struggle to play this post flop. Hey, it's not raising a lot on the flop. I thought it would be raising a lot. But it, it, like, is, it is raising pre-flop. Yeah. It's also not an ICM adjusted simulation for final two tables. Yeah, I agree. I like this bet. King I, oh. Okay, Bunty. Uh, Call's good. I like call. Are you not are you going good? all in here? Okay, so that was the question, right? Definitely. I don't think I don't think this is a sixty big blind hand. No, like it's not. But this guy, what do you think he does with pocket jacks, sixty bigs deep, this deep in the waters? Well, so like, what do you do if you call here and he jams over the top? That's why I don't call. <laughs> well, it's kind of the same. It's kind of the same story, right? So like in one scenario, you're isolating yourself first the same range that is going to isolate if you call and you lose the pot regardless or get lucky. Or you call here and give him the option. And like, I mean, do you think he's going to be bluffing on the final table bubble with like ace five here to push you out for a bounty? Oh, my goodness. I, I wouldn't bet on that. I don't know. I don't know, man, what they're up to. They well, he's could. been aggressive. They he's could. been aggressive. Yeah, he's been aggressive too. So it's like, uh, like calling off with tens for 60 here is a disaster. I want to close the door to him playing the pot. And yeah, the but way I, I, the way I play this, Louis, is I play call, and then if he jams, I fold. That's yeah. what I'm doing it, here. If you jam, he's still going. If he happens to pick up the same five hands, he's still going to go all in with you. Yeah, then but he's I'm going afraid to four bet you call, Sometimes he calls back with who knows what. Trash, right? No, that, I don't. That, that I don't think he's. It's a 18 big, 16 big blind bet. I don't think he's just going to call with complete trash. If this guy just want, if this guy has, say he has a big bounty, two hundred, five hundred dollars. This guy has king queen off suit. What do you think he does here? But Louis, also you do know that near the end of the tournaments. The chip stacks are so large that the bounties reduce in value. They reduce in value, but it could be a very big spot. Right? Well, so like so, here's the equation you have to sort out in your head, all right? So do you play risk averse? That way you can get away from cooler situations. Or do you box him out from hands like ace, jack, offsuit, and king, queen suited that have to fold versus your jam? That's what I would and, like to do, but I don't know, right? Who knows, right? You don't know, right? Like it's it's a tough equation to figure out. Like, tough and it, de goes. it depends on the crazy guy, really. Yeah. <clears throat> How crazy he is. Like, I mean, he, this guy obviously has got you pegged. Like he is targeting you. Where are the other players? Who might be in final two tables? <clears throat> I think you could jam this pre flop. Did this <clears throat> guy lose his money here? Is that what happened? Yeah, he lost. Uh, I think blinds go up. 
That's honestly that three point five there, there is probably fine. There we go. Final table. This yeah, it's probably final. Open the packet news. Oh. Okay. Well, we're gonna call. Are we? I think I would fold, <laughs> even versus that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Here we go. <laughs> King on the turn. We might get away. Here we go. We should let fold. it go. Get out of here, please. Thank you. Look at the rabbit. So this is too big, I think. What size? But is it? Six five? and a half. I would go like five and a, five and a quarter, five and a third, something like that. Okay. Yeah. He's only, he's only got 15 behind. Uh, I like seeing a flop here. I would probably play this pretty passively. Yeah, I, I would play that probably similar. This is wide. Yeah. This is pretty wide too, I think. This might be okay. Yep. Final it's table. I it, but look at the it's big either line. wide. Look at the big line. At the it's big either line, wide or big blind. Or look at the big blind, Joey. He's yeah. got seven. Okay. This is a mistake for sure. Yep. <clears throat> this is fine. Um, Very good. I would maybe go a smidge bigger, but I think it's fine. Call. Call's good. Oh, top Wait. and bottom. Dude, so, okay, so. Protect the calling range, right? To call. Yes, I am calling here 100% of the time. You do not want to play a big pot with this guy six handed yeah. when you have this many chips. Yeah. So, usually, top and bottom at GPV, in general, at GTO, it's going to protect your calling range. Now we add the ICM implications. You don't want to play a big pot against him or him because it's like uh, it's going to. You want to. Lighting money on fire. Values. They're going to be able to apply enough pressure to you to really make your life miserable with these other three guys. If you check raise, you have to barrel this time. I would say so too. Uh, that's probably good. Yeah. And Just, think, uh, when you bet this river and you don't bet the turn, diamonds would call this turn. Never call your river, river bet. Spades. The hands like, uh, I don't know, uh, Jack, uh, Queen Jack, they don't pay you on the river unless they hit, whereas they pay you off sometimes. Right? So you need to bet this turn. And on the river, it's kind of a whole bunch of stuff. Great. So it's like, yeah. Uh, it's dicey, man, playing big pots with that guy right now. Yeah. But, um, you want to check maybe your pre flop opening side uh, range. Uh, you're a bit wide, honestly. This is a bit wide. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. I probably don't do this. You never see that second pair big multi. -wave. That's 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 not good at all. All right. So play check. And yeah. Now you got to fold. Uh. Easy fold. Okay bit wide but it's all right good c bet i like that c bet and now this is, here, right? yeah, you gotta you, you gotta go another bullet here yeah i think so i good. like i like five on the turn or yeah. six think about if he has a hand like ace nine of clubs he breaks the turn he kind of has to fold when you barrel again right so you get better aces to fold and then yeah you pick up equity now you let it go. <clears throat> um, I think I like probably folding this. Okay. That's, oh, he raised you? Oh, my God. This is an easy fold pre-flop at ICM. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And your big stack against big stack, all your offsuit ace here folds. You defend like ace nine or ace ten. That's it. Uh, because you, <laughs> when you get in a cooler spot like this, it costs you a fortune. So that to be I, honest, man, easy. like I don't, I don't hate how you play this post flop. I still think I find a fold on the river because what do you beat? Yeah. You, what do you beat, man? You beat his bluffs, and that's it. So 
you're relying on this guy to raise you with a bluff on the turn and then follow through on the river, which clubs are out there, but I yeah, really tried to, re to bluff uh, I really tried to to find the file fold here, but I, I couldn't. I hear you, man. It's tough, dude, like folding folding trips like here, but I, I think folding there on that river, it's it's too costly otherwise. So you jam there, you got called, you win. Um this I would fold. You Is gotta be respectful. Yeah. You gotta be respectful. Uh, this is probably okay to open, but folding's good. I would probably not open this. C bet's good here, though, when you do open it, I think. Yeah, you're way out of line with your ICM free flop ranges. Um, limp here is probably all right into that guy folding, playing very passively blind versus blind. I'm folding here, not playing this pot. I am as well. This is, this is, okay, so think about it like this way. You are blocking the bottom of his range when you open up here. Like these are like nines are like valuable cards you want in his bluffing range perhaps, which he should, honestly, it's like a pit below what he should be bluffing. This is pretty wide. And the chip arrangement is such where there's a 20, a 20 and eight. So you're in a third, three way tie for third place. So you, you have to be respectful here. Like, um, yeah. If this guy has aces, you're just GG. And well, you're it just is going to happen a lot. A lot more than you think. Well, even at that, you don't want to race against Ace King with, with this Dax. Exactly. You don't want to flip here. So it's a fold for me. You block Ace 9, King 9, Pocket 9. <clears throat> There's not an equitable situation, an equitable outcome that's not a 9 on the flop for you there. I would play this very passively. I am going to call, but I'm not raising this guy ever. I, I, I don't hate uh, maybe pro uh, block this time this river. I I don't hate blocking this because he can't raise you, and you're going to protect yourself against better asex. Yeah, maybe a blocker could be good. This is good. I'm just all in here. I'm just going to put this guy all in for four big blinds. You got an ace. You got the spades. It's whatever. Okay, this is this is a call. I think I like this it. is this is good. I think. Well done. This is a good one. All right, now we're three-handed, um, two-way tie for second, and then a big stack. So you're gonna have to play pretty aggressive, blind versus blind Wait, with this guy. Did he did he open that? No, big know. blind defense. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's a reasonable defend. Yeah, jamming's good here. Uh, limping's all right here. I think I still would just put this guy in. I don't want to let this guy see a flop at this point. Limping, yeah, that's why I don't think it's good. You want to limp here when you're 20 big blind, 30 big blind, 40 big blind. But at this yeah. tag depth, you, you, if you limp here, you let him realize equity. You just want to put Yeah, this is a uh, no free lunch zone. Like, yeah. you don't let this guy see a flop for free and because of this, because of that. Yep. That's good. Um, yep. You want to let them play pots when they can. Like you, you don't want to be playing stuff here. Yeah. I would fold this yeah. first that. I, think. I agree. Yeah, this is, this is dicey. Like you got to get out the way. Okay. This is fine. Very good flop. Uh, don't check bet small. You're costing yourself EV here by checking. Call. I like call. Um, yeah, th I think this is okay. Who's going to pay you? That's, yeah, that's good. Um, okay, oh, calls. Very, great. Nice, very good, very good, very nice. All right, A6, raise, call. Seems good. Checks, fine. I would maybe raise this blind versus, or heads up. Call again? You got you to gotta call for sure. Check, let him barrel. You got to call. You can't fold. Oh. What a flop. Look at that flop. What a kind of a scam is this? Yeah. Are we going to win this or what? Yeah, I don't I like raising. I like raising. Click it, call it. 
check it, it's probably fine. Fold it, whatever. It's not a good run out. Click it, call it. Uh, I like betting here a lot. Bet, yeah. Don't like checking. Oh, you got to continue, man. Like when you got the open ender, when your head's yeah. up, you got to be, you got to be wider. Ooh. Uh, this is this is probably okay. It's a bit. This is a bit spicy, but it's it's kind of whatever. <laughs> You get there. Um, offsuit, I'm probably just folding here. I like raising these trashy ones, these trashy high lows. <clears throat> I like C betting small. Yeah, and that's a good sizing too. Good. This is good. I like C betting small there. <clears throat> call. Check. Call. Check. Do you ever do anything else but check it? Um. When, no. Yeah, I, I'm just checking. Checking range, right? Yeah, I would think so. You know, you shouldn't. I don't think you should be donking here too much. I agree. To be yeah. honest, I'm a little out of depth on like turn heads up donking strats, though. <laughs> oh, okay. He went with the donk here, which I don't like at all. I don't think he has many games. Uh, yeah. I just not, I just don't know what it accomplishes, right? Yeah. Like you're not getting like better to fold. But as we said earlier, David is a scammer. So you know why he does that? Because he hits the six of hearts on the river. Because he's gonna scam on the river. So opponent calls. Oh, the six, look at this. It's How even you... better than the Six of Hearts. It's even better. What do you do? You put the guy in? Yeah, for sure. 100%. It's one to one pile. Yeah. You just put it in. Looks bluffy. Villain calls. He calls with a queen. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, uh, I have one question. Do we min raise <laughs> heads up there always? Min, way, min raise where? Uh, when yeah. you're playing heads up like this with these tech sizes, yes. When we open, action. yeah, I like the min rate, especially the button. Well, so it kind of depends, right? Like if the opponent's just jamming on you a lot, I would play a limp race, a limp jam strategy, or a limp race strategy more. But this guy, man, he wasn't like really trying to put you in the pressure cooker. So I think a min raise is very effective here. As you get deeper, like if you're 40 big blinds effective, you need to start making your race size larger to get like some of his hands indifferent so they fold preflop, but this scenario, a min raise is very good, I think. And then out of position, you can add a little bit more if you want. So we got him and we got the W, guys. So it's a good win, David. Good game. Good game, David. Good effort. Easiest yeah, game of my life. Yeah, let's <laughs> Congratulations. go. Congratulations. So I got I took some notes for you. I'm gonna send them to you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, got a lot to improve on, so uh, it's gonna be nice. We're gonna get better and better, and everything's gonna yeah, be Dave. Better. Honestly, this is this is great. It's um, like you said, there, there's a lot of things that were pointed out that we could really help improve on. Yeah, and uh, the longer you're on the community, the more content you kind of consume, it'll help out. It's the good. better you'll get. Yep, lots of volume. Thank you, guys. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks to you for sharing. Yay. Putting yourself out there. Uh, hopefully, we didn't go too hard on you. No, no, it was fine. It was all fun. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot.